you, Father, for meeting us here. We're so grateful, Lord, that we live immersed in your love and your grace. That every day we get to experience the depth of your blessing for us. Today is another one of those days. We don't know what this next week holds for us, but we know that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength that you have blessed us abundantly. We ask that you would feed us today on your word, that we would hear a voice from you, we would hear a word from you that would sustain us through the coming days. We ask for your blessing on Pastor Chris as he shares your word with us this morning. We're so grateful, Jesus, that you're in the room today. And we give you honor and praise for everything that's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you honor Pastor Chris as he comes to share the word with us this morning? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? We good? Yeah. You excited to hear the word? Yes. 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 Woo. Look for our friend in the back. <laughs> um, we are continuing our series, Meeting Jesus. So... We got anybody else in the house that wants to share their meeting Jesus story or one of their meeting Jesus stories? I met y'all. You met us? <laughs> we met you and you've been a blessing to us. Thank you. Anybody? You do? Okay. Well, come on. Yeah. All right, everybody. <laughs> this is your seat. The whole day. You understand that, right? <laughs> you can't leave. You can't leave, man. Could you bring him his waffle, please? We will learn from your elders. Do not learn from me. You can eat. Your mom grew up the whole time to the liquor. My breakfast with Chris. Welcome to our talk show. Yes. I like that. Welcome to our talk show. Talk show. Yeah. All right, let's tell us, tell us about it. How old are you, first off? 13. 13 years old. It's mm -hmm. awesome. Do you like being 13? Mm-hmm. You know what? You can't talk and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> you can only eat when I'm talking. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, tell us about tell us about meeting Jesus. Um. Well, it happened at like I guess it was an early age because like my mom, she was always like shown to Jesus, and so was I. It's like. It's always happened over and over as I changed churches. I like felt like I got reintroduced to Jesus when, right. like when I came here for the first time. I felt like it was the strongest introduction, you know? Awesome. Because there's never really been anything sad in my life, but you know, I just got reintroduced to Jesus. So just coming here was the last time you met Jesus, you think? And mm -hmm. First time and just a new church and, and new, the church, whole new, people. New, new people, new friends, new life. And it was like meeting Jesus all over again. Mm -hmm. Is that because the people are so much like Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Aw. We should give you guys yourself a hand. Huh? <laughs> that's, a cool story. That's, a, that's a cool story. And we're grateful that you guys are here because this morning we had pancakes. No, no. waffles. <laughs> we had waffles. And, <laughs> and cool jelly and, and strawberries and stuff. And, and your family did that. And your family is very um, fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, they can be fabulous. I wasn't gonna use that word, <laughs> but I was. I was gonna go more along the lines of committed and, and generous and um, just overall really, really great people. And we love your family, all of your family. And we can tell you're getting raised right because. You're that way too. Yeah. It is like I did it. Right? No? Maybe. Yeah. Together. Together, right? Well that's awesome. <laughs> your forces. Awesome. Well that was good. I'm I'm happy to hear your story. And uh, you get to sit right here the whole time. Yeah. Yeah? And you also maybe there's some talks maybe that you might be learning. The, the computer so that you can do the slideshows and all that kind of stuff during next service. Yeah, the next generation of transformation house. Transformation house. 
That's awesome. And that's what we want, right? Yeah. Because you got way more to offer than we do, right? I don't know. You don't have to. Oh, sure you do. I think you do. Mostly because you're probably being raised right and because yeah. of how you met. People do say that I'm not like crazy good at anything, but I'm just like slightly good at everything. That's awesome. That's and we need we need those type of people. Yeah. So you're gonna fit just right in. You can just take off. I think you'll do an awesome job back there. And I don't know if you noticed or not, Amy really needs somebody back there. Because this is like, she's only been up front maybe a couple times. And I'm pretty sure she burst today. Like, because she's been back there behind that. She, you can't burst back there. And she, so she's got like months and months built up of, of she needed to get something out. I always thought she was just, you know, just really tense all the time, but she just needed to burst. And she'd come up here and she preached and she worshiped and it was awesome, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we need more people in more spots. Don't you think? Yeah. And you're that guy, right? Awesome. Can't wait to get that started. We are in John chapter 6 today. And today we are talking about how Jesus uh, <laughs> met the masses met the large groups of people, okay? And and I want us all to stand just while we read scripture because I think we should. Because it's the word of God and we should honor that. Amen? Amen. Uh, it's chapter six, verse no, chapter six, verses one through thirteen. Ready? Yeah. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered, eight months of wages. Eight months of wages. That's, that's a lot of wages, right? Eight months of wages uh, would not buy enough bread for each one to have just a bite. All right, so that's a lot of people. That's, that's, that's a crowd coming. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what kind of bread that was. It was like... Canary bread? Yeah. It's like they have the canary there. Oh, and that's where they're like, I mean, at, I mean, uh, I don't know, eight months salary might not buy Panera bread today, but just for me. No, that's really good though. He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Uh, eight months wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small uh, barley loaves and two small fish. Now, how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and, and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. All right, you guys can sit. So, I have to remember that I have a guest and I have to sit down with you because I won't wander around. Okay? Reading this, um, I mean, we've all heard this story before, right? We've, we've read this chapter in the Bible before. And, and it's, it's, it's one of the stories of, of Jesus and performing a miracle. And it's a really cool miracle. And I've always read it and kind of like, you know, how did it, you know, because my mind works, well, how did this really happen, you know? And, and there's really, if you have, if you try to break something down and try to, see exactly what happened like 
that they dip it in water and it made it good. Sometimes you can dip bread in water and it expands. You know what I'm saying? Um, like people, I know some people from Ohio that pour coffee on their bread and eat it. And that just seems gross to me. But, but you know, the bread just kind of like, it gets soggy for one, but at the same time it kind of expands. So I thought that and I was like, nah. <laughs> that, that ain't how they did it. It wouldn't work that way. The only really way we can describe what happened is that it was a miracle, and Jesus did it. And so that's kind of what these that's that's what that's what we're talking about today. That's how Jesus has introduced himself, met a crowd of people, a mass of people, by performing a miracle. That's what's happening today. You ever had a miracle happen? Um, maybe. You wouldn't know? Oh, I can't stand there anything. Oh, true story. True story. <laughs> true story. You can't remember anything. How's your grades in school? They're pretty good, right? Yeah. You remember something. <laughs> huh? That's that's all you have room for, right? That's a miracle. School work. <laughs> <laughs> that's a miracle. <laughs> Mom said that's a miracle. Yes, huh? That's a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't have that problem when I was in school. I can remember anything. So... I cheated. No, I'm just kidding. I did. I, did. I, did. I don't recommend that at all. That's bad. It was a miracle that I made it through school. And here I am today. Miracles have to happen sometimes. You believe that? You believe that to be true? Mm -hmm. I do too. And I think as we look at these scriptures, we notice in chapter 5 that the first thing Jesus sees the crowd coming. All right? You ever been in that place where... Um, we, we tend to plan for these things, right? Like, we know when a crowd's coming. Like, if you invite someone to your house, Christmas or Thanksgiving or something like that, we plan, you know? We, we got a plan in place. We got everybody in the room's bringing food, right? You know, somebody's bringing, like, what's your favorite? Do you make food? Can you make food? Yes. Are you a good cook? An amazing chef. What's your favorite thing to cook? What's my favorite thing to cook? Yeah. I want to ask you, what's the, what does he do the best that you enjoy the most? Just one. Chickens. Shrimp. It's, it's just a half hour talk. Come on. Is this like grilled or is he? Grilled, usually grilled. So he's a great, he can get on the charcoal grill. Or inside. Does he, does he wear an apron? No, he should have. <laughs> so, 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 so if we're having a great big get together, we're gonna we're gonna ask that that Matt does works the grill. Yes, because yes. he's yeah. So we're excited. He's the grill yeah. master. So he is going to he is going to grill us some chicken and shrimp, and it's going to be really tasty because that's what he's good at. Okay. And Al, you're amazing. I, I hear it. You bring some good stuff sometimes, and and well, you only tease us. You're like, I'm a great cook. Here, I'm gonna cook for you once a year. No. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And when he says he didn't cheat us, he's probably gonna say he didn't lie. <laughs> so, anyways, what are you gonna prepare for? The this big meal we're having because we're you know. We gotta, we gotta meet. We gotta make sure all these people get fed. So you well, have something really good, right? I mean, y'all gonna grill together? Say, yeah, I was gonna say no. Max handling the grill. I'll, I'll do the sides. So now we need a really big grill. No. Yes. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just need a couple burners, a couple pans. I'll do the sides. What kind of sides you gonna do? Uh, what do you want? Vegetables. What are you good at? What's like your? This is your side dish. It takes a long time, but uh, risotto. I'm really risotto. All right, so now we got some grilled chicken. We got some grilled shrimp. We've got risotto. Who else? Anybody got something really good? What? Tell me. <laughs> See what I tell us. So you tell us. Uh, well, everything. Everything. Yeah, everything. Give us one good side, or maybe a dessert. Um, dessert. Cheesecake. Yeah, cheesecake. Really? She makes good cheesecake. Really? She makes everything. 
She likes it. Oh, yeah. precious. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to get? The new Xbox or something? No, cheesecake. He wants cheesecake. He just wants cheesecake. All right, so we've got grilled chicken, we've got risotto, we've got cheesecake. Anybody else really good at anything? Oh. What? Chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. <laughs> We're going to have some chocolate milk. And you do. This is really, uh, this is really thick chocolate milk. Like, like it don't pour. Yeah. Almost, almost like drinking a shake. That's how thick it is. He loves his chocolate. Yeah, but it's not really. It's just really it has so much chocolate in it that it's just like. It's like it took the whole thing of powder. Right. Put, like, All right. So now we got some food, we got a side, we got some dessert, we got something to drink. We've planned, right? Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a fabulous <laughs> meal that, that we're going to have because we planned for this. And, and, and we're excited, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can plan for this. You know, we got like, we're going to do this next week, next Sunday. Grab a meal after church, and this is what everybody's bringing. Okay? Oh, wait, we're no? I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> but we know fall's coming, and we like to eat together at Thanksgiving one Sunday after church. Yeah. So maybe something like that can happen. Mm -hmm. And and okay. we'll plan that. We'll put, let's see, we'll put Tabitha in charge. Oh, yes. Because she's really good at organizing things. She really is. She's a good organizer, right? She keeps everybody straight, right? Focused. Focused. Is that what she does? Yeah. Yeah? Do you believe that? Except for when it comes to Pokemon Go. What? <laughs> what? Pokemon Go? Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Um, and my Pokemon are very well organized, actually. <laughs> okay. okay. We, won't, we won't talk about Pokemon. No, because I don't, I don't understand it. We're off track. Yeah, we'll get way off track. And I mean, I have plenty of time because I don't know what time it is. It's no, we don't want to know. Yeah. Right. So, so, anyways, we all plan. We put people in place. We got all this kind of stuff. Jesus knows. Jesus knows this crowd's coming. It's not something that he's about to test his his fellows and see where their faith is and see. Who are they going to depend on? This little kid that's only got just a little bit? Or the fact that they don't have enough money to buy 5,000 people enough food to carry them over to the next day, right? So Jesus, we, where we would all plan, Jesus is on the scene and he's just going to perform a miracle and make it happen, right? Right? Come on, say something. So... <laughs> And, and we see that in verse 7. Eight months away, just didn't have enough to buy each one, have a buy. And, and, and we could look at that, we could look at that situation and go, you know, that's very, I mean, what if, you know, I'm, like today, I don't ever post anything on Facebook, but for some reason I'm like an administrator on Transformation House now. And so it pops up all the time, and I'm like, well, I ought to say something this morning. So I did. I was like, I'm excited, I'm expecting and in my mind, I'm expecting like so many people and 5,000 people. And then, then you get sick at your stomach because you're like, what are we going to do? Because that's 5,000 people. I have like 4,950 chairs too short. <laughs> yeah. So what are we going to do? You know what I'm saying? And, and we don't have a lot of grass, so there's nowhere for them to sit, right? So... Then you start getting sick and you worry, but God has a lot to do with the miracles that would have to take place for that to happen, <coughs> and, and so I don't know what he would do. But anyways, that's what I was expecting. That's what I wanted to happen, and, but then as I start thinking about it, it would take a miracle to make it happen, because we can't do that, right? You know, Sunday morning, I'm praying to Jesus, we want 500 people at Transformation House, it's going to be a great word, great, great worship. Things are going to be awesome. We're going to have waffles and cool jelly to go with it and, and all this great stuff. And Lord, send 5,000 people. Well, <laughs> they didn't know 5,000 people were coming. Did you bring enough food for 5,000 people? Nope. Uh, reckon how long worship would be with 5,000 people. 
it'd probably carry over a little bit, right? I mean, it'd be pretty long. We could possibly be here all day. Who's going to park everybody? Where are they going to park? You know, we start thinking all these things, and it's like, whoa, you know, maybe we should step back, because it's like, it takes a miracle to make this happen. Mm -hmm. and, and this is how Jesus, when there's a huge crowd, when there's a mass of people, right, he wants to, this, this is how he wants to show who he is, and the fact that we need him, right? So, yesterday, is there any football fans in, in here? Woo! College football fans. I never know. <laughs> all right. I got then y'all all probably didn't watch this, but this is a really cool story. Um, I love college game day. Like, it's 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 a it's a ritual in the house that we all are in front of the TV at nine o'clock on Saturday mornings, and you know we're eating and we're like excited because they're going to talk about football. And so y'all don't understand, <laughs> but we're really pumped in our house because it's college football and we love it. Okay. Huh? You like to play football? Well, that's all part of it. And, you know, you got the love of football. This is how we do. This is how we roll at our house. In this. So, <laughs> but it's more than that. They tell these really cool stories. Well, and some of them are, some of them are like, I love the walk-ons when they get scholarships, the full scholarship rides, and and how they had to work to get towards you know, get, get their full scholarship, and then how everybody responds, and that's a real cool story, but that's not what I'm talking about. Yesterday, there's this really great story. This guy, anybody familiar with Texas University? Are you helping me or making fun of me? Need to really up? Yeah. Okay. You need some more food? No. Can I get somebody to get you something? You want something to drink? No. Okay. No? You're good. Okay. So I check on you. Okay. Anybody familiar with Texas University at all? You know, look them horns, yeah. that all kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, some, you know, most people are. Okay. They have this steer. Yeah. They're really big horns. They run out on the field. His name's Bebo. I don't know why they call him Bebo. <laughs> Anybody know? No. All right. Well, it takes four people. It takes four people to have him in his harness and run him out on the field as the football team comes running out. It's a really glorious thing, and 90,000 people are cheering, and it's Bebo and the football team, and here they come, and they're about to, you know, win a football game, maybe. So, <laughs> it's a really cool story. Well, this guy was one of the four guys that did it back when he went to school because he didn't have well, enough skill set to be on the football team, but he wanted to be involved, all right? Great, graduated, got a job, moved away, gets cancer. Flies away. All right? Yes. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. This is, this is where they get you on these stories. And it's like, oh, we, you know. And a very rare form of cancer uh, where his liver's like going away. And he only has like a certain part of it left, and there's only like 3% left or something. When finally, uh, I don't remember where he went or what school it was, but a university that does really big studies in cancer and new drugs and things like this had something, <coughs> so he went there. And they said, all right, you, you, we're gonna do this, but you probably only have about two weeks left, maybe two months. So that's really like scary news when you get stuff <coughs> like that. Um, I remember because I had a doctor tell me that about my mother. So I know, I, I, know, I know what that's like. So, and maybe, maybe that's why the story is so moving to me, because I've personally had to deal with it. But, so, the university was like, the University of Texas was like, hey, uh, you know, this guy spent four years here, really great guy, we love him, he ran Bebo out on the field with some other people, and he was really big part, and he always has, they come to almost all the home games they can, and all this kind of stuff, and we should, we should do something. We should, you know, let him know that we're in his corner. Because then his wife comes on, this guy that's got cancer, his wife comes on and she tells a story how she felt all alone. Like, she was the only one having to deal with this. She's the only one having to um, pray for him and, and seek God and, and asking God to heal him and all this kind of stuff. So, but she just felt so alone because they're away. You know, they're away from where they grew up, where they went to school, the people they knew, just felt so alone. Then all of a sudden, these videos 
they start getting email videos from people at Texas and, and it's old coaches and it's old players that were on the team while he was while he was the handler of, of Bebo and all this kind of stuff and then and then they were cool, you know, so these videos start pouring in and then some other people that went there like Matthew McConaughey sent him a video and then and then uh, the president, President Obama sent him a video and and so all of a sudden there's this need for support and this need for prayer and this need for uh, not being alone, not feeling alone. And one person is sending a video because it's a good idea. And then other people are like, you know, we're going to send one. You know, and then it becomes not only, not only does the surrounding community start to do it, but then a whole university does it. And then once the whole university has done it, now other states are getting involved. And then we go from other states to people that don't even really know and they just want to be a part of praying and sending a good word and, and we're in your corner and we're fighting for you. And, and then it, it extends on out to like a president, you know, because you, know, you got to, for the most part, you got to be somebody for the president to be like praying for you, you know, or, you know, I'm encouraging you to fight, you know, don't let this be you, you fight, you know, that kind of stuff. So it just grew. And what began to happen was his, the chemo started actually working. And so it completely changed everything. And he gained like, each week he was gaining like 10% of his function of his liver back. And it's like mind boggling. Nobody knew what happened. How, how is this happening? Because there was only so much. Now it's, now it's operating more. Just a really great story where, where it, God took a circumstance that seemed like there was no possible way for anything to happen and then included so many people. I mean, that would you, would you ever think that maybe a graduate of, I don't even remember what year it was, but whatever year it was, and President Obama are praying and encouraging somebody for the same thing. God orchestrated that. God put that together. Because God needed to show certain people across the nation who he was. It's a really cool story. The guy's almost back to 100% now. He's, this past Saturday, he was an honorary handler. So he got to run Bebo, Bebo back out on the field. And, and he was crying, and everybody else was crying. And I looked around, and everybody in the house was crying. And it's just one of those great stories. But it's a miracle. It can only be described as a miracle, right? Like, you can only say this happened because Jesus, right? And so, I just thought that was a really great story. I wanted to share that to, sh to show you that miracles take place still today. Not just back then when we needed to feed a whole bunch of people with a little bit of bread and two fish, right? Miracles still take place today. Do, do you have maybe, is there like... Do you think it would take a miracle for something that you're kind of hoping for? Anything in your life, kind of, or you know, like family or something, or that take a miracle? You don't think so? Well, if you don't mind me saying, I would love Jesus to perform a miracle in his world. I think, I think, poor little guy just wanted to worship today and couldn't because there's an asthma and all that kind of stuff. But I believe Jesus still operates that way, and I believe he could. I believe he can move in and because we're creating an atmosphere of need. We need Jesus to step in and do something, right? They make some medication, right? We got the little inhalers, but it doesn't heal it. It just makes it better while it's happening, right? So, and my brother, my younger brother used to have it. And he was, uh, he was in the Boy Scouts. Cub Scouts, one of them. I don't know which one it was in. So, you know all about the Cub Scouts, the Boy Scouts, right? Mm -hmm. Aren't you in there? Mm -hmm. so isn't, it, isn't it weird how talking about Boy Scouts and then you're a Boy Scout? I don't know how that happened. Must be a miracle, right? <laughs> yeah, could be. Could God be. orchestrates things that is awesome. <clears throat> that we can only go, you know, God did this, Jesus did this. But anyways, he used to be in the Boy Scouts and and he had asthma, and I remember it would get on my nerves so bad because it would happen. I'm being honest because he's my brother. <laughs> he knows I love him. 
But it would always happen at like a time where it was like, what's it happening now for? We about to do this, or we about to do that. You know, we about to have, we about to go to the movies. <laughs> and you, you ruined movie night. No, stuff like that. But there's, I don't, I don't, I don't know that there's like a healing for it. Like there's a medication that you can take. I know that you can do the inhaler to help you while you're having one. But so it would take a miracle for Jesus to say, hey, there's a need. I'm the guy that does miracles. And because you can't do it because for some reason, whatever reason, they haven't found a way to heal it yet with medication. So Jesus is like, hey, I'm in the miracle business. And that's what's needed right now. You know, Jesus is still in the miracle business. In any situation. It's not just asthma. But wouldn't that be cool? You know, you know, you, we start praying for Jesus to do a miracle in his life. And, and, maybe, and maybe it just gradually starts to get better. But we can, we can see it happening and, and it's working. Maybe you should pray for him. Jesus work a miracle. You know, because we want him to feel better, right? Because I seen your concern while we were up there. You're like, I think you were concerned. You're concerned, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we want that. So, but that's what you have to offer, right? Because you're not like a doctor right now, right? So you can't. Uh, you don't know this medication. Like you haven't created a medication, right? That you could give him to make it. But what you do have to offer is prayer, right? And, and maybe you could see, because in order for Jesus to do miracles, we find in, in verse 9 here, in order for him to do miracles, you have to look at what you got. See, in verse 9, what they have? They had some fish, a little bit, and a, a child's got it. So it couldn't have been very much, because it's a child. You can't hold a whole lot, right? Got a little bit of bread and a little bit of fish. And so Jesus says, well, you know, here's what we have. So let's make that, let's, let's take what you have and see how far we can go with it. And then that's where Jesus gets in the miracle business and starts doing what he does. Jesus performs a miracle. And miracles are important. Miracles are important. And here's why miracles are important. Because it takes some people to meet Jesus that way and know who he is. Because I've had friends before where I'm like, well, let me tell you how I met Jesus. And my, my, sto my story of meeting Jesus is like, and everybody has their own story. And, and in the coming weeks, I encourage you all to, when we ask you to come up and share it, because they all make a difference in somebody's life, okay? Mine, guess where I met Jesus? Here. No. Not here. At your house where we made the church. At my house where we made the church? Mm -hmm. No, I met him before then. You can't start a church and not know who Jesus is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What kind of sinners do you think we are? Huh? It's not us. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I, but I seriously, I met Jesus way before that. Because I used to be a bad, not such a good person. And... And so I actually met Jesus in a Burger King bathroom. Interesting. Huh? Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. And I'm not going to share the whole story today. But, uh, <laughs> but, feel, but feel free for anybody to ask. But, see, there's a story that goes with that. Where did you meet Jesus Christ in a Burger King bathroom? Does anybody else have that type of response without going into uh, the whole story? Like, where did you meet Jesus? Is it in the Burger King bathroom? Mm -hmm. No. But is it in a, maybe a weird place? Like, how did that happen? You win. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I win? Yeah. yeah, still get a trophy. <laughs> yeah. I'll, just go, I'll just go with what Jesus yeah. gave me. But in my circumstance in meeting Jesus, it took a miracle. Honestly, it did. And it wasn't to the masses of people. But it's making a difference in the mass of people that I share my testimony with. So, mine is, Jesus had to get me all alone in a stall, in a dead Burger King 
that nobody else was there, but maybe the employees. And for the last person, the last friend I had, to turn their back and walk out and say, I can't do this anymore. It took that. It took a miracle. It took Jesus. It, well, it took me. It took me basically running everybody away in my life and then only having one person left and then running that person off and then having to put my need on Jesus. That's, that was a miracle. That was a miracle. So God puts us in situations where he has to perform a miracle sometimes so that we know who he is because he's the only one that can provide miracles he's the only one that can make them happen and he orchestrates things in so many different ways and that's what we're learning in this whole series of meeting jesus is is sometimes jesus shows up and it's just a one-on-one -on -one thing sometimes jesus shows up and we meet jesus and it's in a crowd of people you know, I know many stories of people meeting Jesus at, at youth camp. I mean, youth camp is one of the awesome, most awesome places you can go unless you don't like hanging out with teenagers. But it, it just is because you watch, you watch when a group of teenagers gets together and just the masses of teenagers give their all to Jesus. And it's amazing. Youth camps are awesome. Well, the worship time and the word time is awesome at youth camps. I'll do that. I served as a youth leader at a camp two years in a row. Right? I don't know how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my most enjoy, well, other than the kids giving their all to Jesus and just watching Jesus do work, I, I duct taped a kid to a head a bed a headboard with bunk beds. So there were two on top of each other, so we picked them up off the ground and duct taped them to the headboard. Were you there? No, but that was you though, right? Huh? You duct taped them? Yeah. Well, I said we. I had some help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was you. <laughs> <laughs> or Jonathan. Yeah, it, was <laughs> it was probably Jonathan. But anyways, Jesus does works of miracles in so many different types of venues and and he still is in that business. And things still happen <laughs> where when we look, here, here's why we need miracles. The, you ready? These are real, three really good points. Anybody need a miracle today? Be honest. Anyone need a miracle? That's it? Don't be shy. <laughs> I, I would, I mean... I, have, I would like a miracle, but it's kind of selfish, but, you know, I would still like a miracle. And that might not go with, you know, what Jesus wants to do right now, but, you know, but we all, some of us need, like, real miracles to happen in our lives, right? Right? We need real miracles. Like, maybe it's our brother to get healed. Maybe it's uh, whatever miracles you have that you need. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's whatever. But... Here is why we need miracles. First reason is because it proves who Jesus is. It proves that you need him. It proves that he's the savior. He's the one that supplies your needs. Because right now, that miracle that you need, think about it. Everybody that raised their hand, what you're thinking about, that miracle that you need, you're still trying to make it happen on your own. Right? Right? It's a selfish one, so, yeah. Even if it's not a selfish one. I mean, there's real needs. There's real needs for a miracle to take place in, in the church today. But you are still trying to make it happen yourself. Well, Jesus, it, when you're still trying to do it and not counting on him, you're not giving him the opportunity to do his miracle to show that you really need him to do the miracle. Because he's the only one that can perform them. You're not in the miracle business, are you? No. I mean, if you are, that's fascinating. We want to hear all about it after church. <laughs> but I don't think anybody in the room is in the miracle business. I've never heard of anybody like that. I mean, some, but they're using what Jesus does, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the second reason miracles are important <laughs> is because 
it gives Jesus to a chance to express and use his grace in our lives. Because we have to identify that we actually need the miracle to happen and that Jesus is the person to do it. But sometimes it takes an ongoing um, gift in our life of grace and Jesus to continually work and us giving him the avenue to do that miracle. Because sometimes he uh, begins us on the track of a miracle where it's taking place and it's happening. Like the story with cancer that I shared. But sometimes then we believe, well, maybe we can speed it along a little bit. But that doesn't mean he's stopped working his miracle in your life. That just means you decided that you were going to try to rein it back in yourself and, and continue on. But when he's doing the miracle and when you allow him, that gives him the opportunity to continue to use his grace and express his grace and and show that you still need him through the whole process, right? Because it's Jesus. And so yes. what you're saying is that I'm going to say I need to keep my mouth closed and pray more and trust the Lord that he'll open up the doors for That's what I believe the scripture is telling us. Because he wants to, here's what Jesus wants to do. He wants to be able, I have to stand up now because it's, it's, it's like that moment that you want to stand up, you can get up too if you want to, if you're tired of sitting. But try not to move around like I do. Okay. Just be still, okay? I can do it. Okay. I'm just kidding. You can move around if you want. Jesus wants. It's, it's like salvation. Isn't salvation a miracle? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Salvation's a miracle. So it's like salvation. Uh, we need Jesus to get saved, right? Yeah. We need... We, the only avenue through salvation is through Jesus. Right? How often do we keep trying to do it ourselves? Pretty much every day? Every day. <laughs> exactly. So... When, when we need God to perform miracles in, in our lives or in someone else's lives and we're, and we're praying for that, you know, lots of times we put ourselves in the way. And Jesus wants to, at the end, at the end of the miracle, Jesus wants to be up on the cross where all eyes are on him because you can only say that he did it. Because that's what a miracle is. It's something that he performs. And that proves, that proves that he is the son of God. It proves that he is the son of God. It proves that the gift of salvation and grace that he offers us is working in our lives. And it's, we, can't, we can't do it. We can't do it. So the only avenue through what we need is Jesus Christ. And he gets all the glory for it. And there's no, we don't get any glory for it. And that's what Jesus, that's what Jesus wants to do so many times. When you have a mass of people that needs to be fed. We have a mass of people that needs, has needs, whatever that need is. Jesus wants to meet them in a place where he can, where you can only say after you leave there, this is Jesus, and this is what he does. And we didn't do anything but offer what we have and get out of the way. Offer what you have. God's gifted us all. God's skilled us all in many different avenues. And we could be really great prayers, or we could be really great bakers and offer him two loaves. We could be really great fishermen and come back with two fish. But God wants to take what we have, work the miracle, so that at the end of the day we look at him and he's glorified for it. But that's important because people, some people have to meet Jesus that way. I mean, we're going to talk about, I don't remember what all the weeks are now, but 
uh, like next week is, can we promo next week now? Children. Children? You're doing that one. Yes. Pastor Tony, meeting children. It, next week is meeting children. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that's going to be like. But in the first week was meeting, I'm trying to back up now. I don't even know what last week was. And I did it. Religious leaders. Meeting the religious leaders. Oh, you should have been here for that one. Pharisees. Yeah. And we all found out we had some Pharisee in us, right? Yeah. Right? That's what we should have been working on this week, right? And then the week before that was... It's on, it's on Facebook. And, right? It's on Facebook. talks about all the weeks. And I really think this is a great opportunity for, if you guys will look at the series and how it's laid out, you know, you know people, you know people, you know people in your life that you would like for them to meet Jesus, right? Yeah. We're laying out a whole series of how Jesus met people in the Bible. And it's all different types of people. It's in the masses, like today, where Jesus has to work a miracle so that everybody sees it. And it could have been that just one person's life was really touched that day. And they gave. And that's really what it's always about, is that one relationship, right? So, or it could have been like the week before where you know some religious people that needs to meet Jesus. And the way, and the way is, to, is what we learned last week, that Pharisee is in all of us. And just because, just because you are one and dressed in a robe doesn't mean that you don't need to meet Jesus. And the coming weeks with the children next week and how that happens and whatever the rest of the weeks are are all going to be amazing, but it's all about meeting Jesus. It's all about that personal relationship. And there's such a great opportunity for you to take those weeks of this upcoming series and know people in your lives and invite them to church. And bring them in because we only exist to bring people to Jesus. That's why we're here. We're here because Jesus met each one of us somehow. It could have been it could have been a youth group. It could have been in a Burger King stall. It could have been in children's church. It could have been your experience in even coming to church. And there's so many stories and people need to hear it. It's your testimony. It's what Jesus is using to perform miracles in people's lives and give them the gift of salvation and grace. Isn't Jesus good to us? Amen. Isn't he amazing? He performs the miracles to the masses. He performs the miracles to the masses. I'll stand and we'll pray. Father God, we are so grateful that you are the miracle worker that you provide and meet all of our needs. We're so thankful that you meet us in so many different ways. That you show us that you are Jesus and you are glorified in, in your works and how you give us life and make us a new creation. We're so grateful for the salvation.